In this video, you will be introduced on the concept of design of experiments or DOE and its advantage over traditional OFAT experimentation through a case study. DOE requires fewer experiments, lesser time, and lesser material to obtain the same amount of information from traditional OFAT experimentation, which is a laborious and time-consuming process. DOE is especially effective for screening through a high number of factors such as ingredients in media development and can efficiently reduce the cost and time of R&D to get products faster to the market. The advantage of using DOE for media optimization for a variety of microorganisms has been discussed in a review paper by Singe et al. in 2017. Anna is a microbiologist studying a new, isolated bacterium that has industrial importance. To grow this bacterium, Anna used media recipes from literature that contain a mixture of different complex nutrients to increase the likelihood of bacterial growth. While this media composition is suitable for small-scale experiments in a lab-based setting, it is not feasible for industrial scale as growth is not optimal. To solve this problem, Anna set out to develop a media that is optimal and can provide the highest growth of this bacterium. It is likely that there may be other nutrients, vitamins, or inorganic ions that is required for the growth of this bacterium as well. As an example, let us say that Anna has determined five different continuous factors she would like to investigate based on existing literature. Amount of carbon, nitrogen, MOPS buffer to regulate pH, ammonium chloride, and potassium sulfate. There is only one response, bacterial growth, which is expressed as a change in the optical density, or OD, after 24 hours. To start, we'll focus on studying two factors, the amount of MOPS buffer and ammonium chloride. Anna's goal will be to find the concentration of these two factors that will result in maximum growth. How would she approach this? Anna might experiment in an ad hoc fashion using trial and error where she tests the different concentration of these two factors and see what the resulting growth is. For example, she might conduct a trial at starting values for the two variables and record the optical density after 24 hours. Then, she might adjust one or both values based on her results and continue until she thinks she has found the best set of values. We hope you can see that this approach is not very efficient, even if it is guided by expertise or literature. Instead, Anna might use a more structured approach. For example, Anna might design individual experiments to study each factor. In a one factor at a time, or OFAT experiment, Anna changes the value of the one factor and measure the bacteria's growth. This is a common approach utilized by microbiologists to develop optimal media. Previous recipes from literature are used to guide the choice of factors to be removed or changed. Coming back to the previous example, suppose Anna wants to find the concentration of MOPS buffer that results in the highest growth. This concentration ranges from 10 to 50 millimolars. Anna designed an experiment with five trials. For each trial, she increases the amount of MOPS buffer by 10 millimolars. To control for ammonium chloride, Anna conducts the trials with an ammonium chloride concentration fixed at 20 millimolars. After each trial, she measures the optical density after 24 hours as a measure of bacterial growth. Once the experiments are performed, the following graph is obtained. Anna concludes that the optimal concentration to maximize growth is 30 millimolars. But what about ammonium chloride? The concentration for ammonium chloride also ranges from 10 to 50 millimolars. Anna decides to run a second OFAT experiment to find the optimal concentration of ammonium chloride. For this experiment, Anna varies ammonium chloride concentration with MOPS buffer concentration fixed at 30 millimolars. Anna conducts another set of five trials where she increases the amount of ammonium chloride by 10 millimolar. Anna discovered that maximum growth is obtained when ammonium chloride concentration is 40 millimolars. 
In two experiments and a total of 10 trials, Anna has identified the concentrations for MOPS buffer and ammonium chloride that will result in the highest growth. But what if the optimal concentrations were actually here instead? That is, what if maximum growth is obtained when MOPS buffer concentration is at 10 millimolar and ammonium chloride concentration is at 30 millimolar? When you experiment using trial and error, or when you conduct one factor at a time experiments, it is unlikely that you'll find the optimum set of conditions across two or more factors. You need to understand the combined effect of the factors. So you need to experiment with your factors at the same time and run trials that span the range of values for your factors. This range of factor values defines the experimental region. For the two factors, MOPS buffer and ammonium chloride, the experimental region is a square or rectangle. When you experiment using trial and error, your design, after the fact, might look like this. Notice that none of the trials were conducted at low values of both buffer and ammonium chloride, and none of the trials were run near the optimum conditions. Anna's OFAT design might look something like this. Here, Ammonium chloride concentration was fixed at 20 millimolar during the experiments for MOPS buffer, and MOPS buffer was fixed at 30 millimolars for the experiments for ammonium chloride. And the optimum is here. Neither the ad hoc experimentation nor the two OFAT designs led Anna to the optimal settings. What went wrong? Anna didn't conduct trials throughout the potential experimental region and she didn't simultaneously change the settings of both factors. Because of this, Anna doesn't understand the combined effect of the two variables on the response. Anna have no idea whether the two factors interact in their effect on the response. This scenario is loosely based on work by Singleton et al. in 2019. In the same situation, the authors were trying to develop an optimal media for an industrially relevant bacterium. The authors first parsed through literature to find information on key media components and came up with a list of 21 different ingredients that were said to have an effect on bacterial growth. If we employ an strategy of ad hoc or OFAT experimentation on all 21 different ingredients, there is over 17 million different combinations of trials that can be explored. This number is completely unfeasible and impossible to investigate. Instead, the author used Design of Experiments, or DOE, to screen through the 21 different ingredients. Prior to conducting her first set of experiments, Anna could have used Design of Experiments, or DOE, to both design and analyze an experimental process. DOE is a systematic, strategic, and rigorous experimental methodology for solving scientific and engineering problems. It is an efficient method to determine the relationship between factors. DOE would have allowed Anna to fully explore the design space in a limited number of experiments, visualize complex interactions between multiple factors, and provides predictions of the biological system or process that is being studied. With DOE, the authors were able to generate a model that provided an estimate of the effects of all 21 different ingredients. From the model, only 9 ingredients were shown to have the largest influence to bacterial growth. Remarkably, the authors were able to gain this knowledge in just 64 trials in comparison to the 17 million possible trials. Once the key ingredients were screened, the authors conducted a second iteration of DOE with the goal of optimizing the concentrations of all nine ingredients that were shown to have the largest influence to bacterial growth. In just 56 trials, the authors observed a substantial increase in bacterial growth for the second iteration in comparison to the first. Altogether, DOE allowed the authors to identify key ingredients and obtain clear results in just 120 experimental runs. For more information and learning about DOE, you can click on the description below which will link you to one of our STIPS module. STIPS is a free online statistics course developed by Jump that you can take and learn on your own pace.
we have a dedicated module for DOE, which will dive deeper into the terminologies, experimental designs, and analysis for your experiments.